In this masterclass, we'll have a chance to start to think about how to go about developing your story and doing your initial research. We'll explore the best way to develop both the written and the digital cases together. How can we make sure that they complement each other, add to each other, rather than get in each other's way or repeat the same old points? Despite the many differences between video and written case studies, they're united by certain core elements. These include the need to have strong stories, to get access, and also to do basic research before you go off to do your first interviews. In this class, we'll explore the story development process for creating together both a video and written case. While both are different, they will share a basic body of research and knowledge about a certain issue. And also certain storytelling rules will apply to both products. The main difference will be that for the video case, certain constraints regarding actually having to get access and film certain locations will have to be met. To make sense of all the information you gather, we'll explore the classic approach to storytelling originally developed for theater. Classic storytelling strategies can help you organize any presentation, including written and video case studies. We'll start by presenting the philosopher Aristotle's narrative arc. Then we'll explain the need for focus. Despite what you've heard about multitasking, people can only pay attention to one thing at a time. So to connect with your audience, you need to explore one concept at a time. Finally, we'll look at the role of conflict and difference. People are activated when they see ideas clash or when they encounter something different something surprising. When you develop your story, you need to figure out your focus. What's your topic? Do you want to explore youth participation in elections or the use of big data in city governance or the importance of socially desirable investing? But the story goes beyond a topic. It's about a journey. It's about how people struggle to realize their values, how they encounter roadblocks and then devise strategies to overcome those roadblocks one by one. In the end, they either succeed or fail. That's the story. Here's a trick. When you're plotting a story, focus first on the beginning and end. Figure out where you want to meet your audience in the beginning, then where you want to take them by the end. Once you've done that, it's easier to fill in the steps from the beginning to the end. Research begins by asking a simple question. What do you want to know? What problem or dilemma do you want to address? and where can you get the information you need. Research takes you to all kinds of places, starting with online databases, libraries and archives, books and other documents, and videos. If possible, visit the location of the story. Get a sense of the people, their values, the kinds of challenges they face. Also, when possible, interview the major characters, as well as experts who can put the issue into context. Ask simple questions, specific questions, that get specific information. Avoid vague questions because they only get you vague answers. When you do research, keep running tabs on all the ideas you discover. Create a document that lists all these ideas you have gathered in the research process. If you do that, you will have the basis of an outline for use later on. Develop a simple filing system, both for online and paper files. Use simple categories to label your folders. Only put material that fits in a category. If you find some information that doesn't fit existing categories, create a new one. Create a new folder. Once you've started to gather lots of materials and ideas, you can start refining your focus. The more you know, the sharper you can understand an idea. The sharper you can understand your focus. You might start with a good question, but you can almost always get a sharper focus as you go. Undergirding great case studies, both digital and paper cases, is narrative. The Greek philosopher Aristotle laid out the elements of drama in his masterwork, The Poetics, 2,500 years ago. Aristotle taught that a story should be complete and whole, with all of the moments of the story relating to each other. The story must also be logical. You need to convey what causes what. It's great to have surprises along the way, that amps up the excitement and the intrigue, but those surprises have to make sense in the larger scheme of things. Aristotle explained that all drama fits a three-part format. In part one, we meet the protagonist and a few other characters, 
and learn about their community, values, and ordinary concerns. In part two, we see the characters taking on a challenge. They deal with the challenge in steps, from the easiest to the hardest aspects of the challenge. With each step, we explore more complex or difficult aspects of the problem. Then, in part three, the characters resolve the issue. Except, in case studies, it's often best to leave the resolution open. After all, you want your students to make sense of the case. You don't want to tell them what to think. You want them to debate the best way to end the story. Always stay focused. Always be able to express your ideas in a quick sentence. Look at the list of bestsellers in the New York Times Book Review. See how each description is short and direct and also gives the essence of the work. When you don't focus, your mind gets scattered. So always try to distill the point of every case study and every section in the case study into a clear, compelling idea. At the center of narrative is conflict. All our lives we confront difficult choices with family and friends, professional colleagues, neighbors, and others. In the best case scenario, these conflicts force us to learn about ourselves and the world and to do things better. Stories also show people with different interests and values. How people manage these differences and make hard decisions determines the essence of the story. Consider what characters might gain and lose when they make different kinds of decisions. Ultimately, we're talking about trade-offs. Whether you're an entrepreneur, a doctor, or a government official, or anything else, you need to take a series of tough choices. The case study teaches you how to weigh those choices. So together and in parallel with the process that Charlie's been describing of thinking about the core story in the written case, you're going to want to think about your video case. This will happen during the research process. You'll be thinking a lot about what can you actually see? Who can you actually talk to? These are going to be key issues in planning your video case. You're going to want to think about how can you imagine your film as a visual story? What visual sequences might tell the story? Is there something that someone does or an event that will be happening that you could film that would be a great way to illustrate the issues at hand? And you have to think about actions that you could cover. Action is great for a documentary, and perhaps there are actions that are happening that you can anticipate, that you could plan to film that will help you tell your story. You'll also want to think about narrative structures for the video documentary, and there are a lot of them to choose from. You could have a film that's essentially idea-driven, i.e. one concept pushes into another concept, Another way of organizing your film is chronology. It could be a story filmed over time. These are both very common narrative structures in documentary film. You're also going to want to think about casting the experts that you're going to want to interview. This is actually much more complex than it might appear at first glance. There's often political considerations that have to be factored in. There may be people you need to interview because they're very involved in one organization or another that you're profiling. This is fine. But there's also a limit to how many people you can actually put in the film. A good film is generally built around a few very strong interviews rather than many, many short ones. So these are all things you're going to have to think about as you go about planning your film. You're also going to want to think about casting your film in terms of heroes or people who actually do things that you could see in profile. Who's actually doing the sorts of things that you're talking about in this issue? Is there a family who's involved in the problem that you're profiling? Is there somebody who is working on an issue that you could film doing something? Or are there people who are actually just doing the basic actions you're describing? You're going to want to actually document these sorts of day in the life activities. That's a very important way of capturing the sorts of reality and the stories you're going to want to portray. And as you think about casting your film, you might also want to consider yourself and your team as subjects. This is something that we've done quite a bit in our research cases in which we follow student researchers in the field as they film themselves on their own research journeys and then include interviews after the fact to talk about their journey of discovery. We found that this is a fantastic narrative structure and it actually works very well with the smartphones and stabilizers that we'll be giving you in your package. So it's something we'd like you to consider for your own films. 
Well, we hope this introduction to the core elements of story research and story development has been useful. In our next lesson, we're going to move on to how to implement these ideas in action in the production of your first film.